Hey there boys and girls of the YouTube world. Today the Duff Dog and I are gonna see if we can't get a 1985 Ford F100 4 x 4 running. That's right, I know you guys are sick of the GMs and want us to do some Fords, and, and we finally found one. Trade a little bit of labor to some local farmers on a uh, square body grain truck, and in trade for my time, we got this 1985 Ford half ton four wheel drive. So I went to high school with these guys, and this was their dad's pickup back in the day, and I remember it being pretty nice, and it, it doesn't look so nice anymore, but regular cab, I think it's a V8 automatic again four-wheel drive this is a bullnose bullnose fords were from 80 to 86. So yeah let's take a look at this thing i'm not really sure if they got this new but i don't think so since how it's got we're on meth south dakota grill guard on it i'm on that looks like his last tagged in 18 so only four years ago not bad for us had these fancy pinstripes this thing used to be a sharp pickup but she really went downhill these wheels, oh man, these wheels used to be, I, I thought they just made this pickup, but uh, they really need some cleaning. It's almost got the uh, square body kink to the hood. A lot of surface rust, and uh, she's pretty well blown out in the box. It's a Lariat option, so I guess you get power uh, windows with that. Tilt, oh yeah. Cruise, AC, Sony tape deck. Oh yeah, nothing but the finest. Uh, looks like the oil's changed at 72,000. I can't imagine this thing's got 172. It's got overdrive, a little slop in the steering wheel. The seat doesn't look that bad. They've kept her covered. He said they cleaned her out for me before I picked it up, so hopefully they got all the good stuff out. Uh, there's an OJ knife back here. I don't know about that. Sliding rear window, you know, fancy stuff. Boy, this thing just really faded bad. Paint quality in the uh, late 80s, early 90s was not good. He said they took a fuel tank out of it, so I'm guessing that's why it's clean in that spot. Hopefully we just lose this stuff on the road. We don't have to clean it up when we get home. Looks like we got a deer antler. Is that a shed? Oh yeah, that's handy. That'll make a nice keychain, huh, Duff? Oh, must have a 302 in it, because that's what the license plates say. It's either a 302 or a 351. Tires flat. And we didn't bring an air pump. This thing is chewy. Flat, yep. This is gonna be great. Side note, 34 to 36 international pickup box trailer. You might have to pick their brain about that one. And some type of hay trailer, header trailer, made out of uh, 36 to 39 Ford. Axles, wide fives, that's your dead giveaway. Fancy John Deere stuff. Anywho, let's get this thing hooked up to the tow pig, get her drug out, and then load her on forward. Definitely should have brought the air compressor with. Live and learn. We're gonna give the uh, tow pig and a winch a test. Ooh, it's all Ford today. We got the Expedition and the Bullnose. Hey, what are you hunting up there? We got work to do. Well, we got her hooked up. We're in four low, so we can really get all the yank. And we're not going to give it the old Mickelson minivan yank, but let her rip, Tater Chip. Oh, nailed it! Let's see what we can do. Also, there's no tow hooks on the front of the Expedition like the diesels have, so we just went around the control arm. So, worst case scenario, we rip the lower control arm off of this thing, have to throw the battery in that thing get home in that oh we got flat tires I wonder if it's ah, this, but this is the same bolt pattern we'll just have to find a jack and wrenches anyway enough rambling let's yank this thing out duff is clearly a farm dog he's over checking out the farm implements here goes nothing come on baby oh boy i did take it out of gear oh yeah freaking loves it Never mind that chattering. Hey, you want to go get in that thing and steer it? That'd be great. Awesome. Now we're jackknifing the trailer. 
Also, don't close your hatch, because what fun would that be? You're a lot of help, dog. A lot of help. I think we're hooked on the long, wrong lower control arm. Yeah, you're almost steering it. Just jump in and steer it. That'd be great. No, no, steer that one. I got this one. I should probably get out and rehook, but we're not gonna. We got this. We're lazy. Ugh, we're gonna have to rehook. Definitely need to splurge and get the old tow hook option on the next $300 tow pig we buy. All right, how's my chain look? Got it hooked? Good? Okay. Get out of the way then. Here we go. Oh, look at that raw horsepower. We're just sliding her sideways. Perfect. Looks like, uh, yeah, boy, is our battery sponsor for the winch on the trailer today. So shout out to, yeah, boy. It's getting warm out. All the sandwiches from last night are coming out of my pores. So let's take off this sweet hay buster sweatshirt and blow this popsicle joint. Fun fact of the day, the Rambler SST Super Sport Touring. Today Duff Dog and I are going to see if we can't get a 1967 Rambler SST back on the road. <laughs> from about oh, I can see the yard from here three quarters of a mile up the road your worthless knowledge for the day also bring a tank of air or portable compressor that was just from steering that thing what a pain Made her home. Look at the cat drug in. You been painting? Yep. The owner kindly gave us the tailgate. We had to go dig it out of the closet. She's uh, seen better days, but still in better shape than this. Let's pump up some tires and see what happens. All right, we got old blue inside here. Let's take a little bit closer look at the uh, gym that we just drug in here. So this is an 85 model. I believe the family that I got it from bought it in 1997. He was a pioneer seed salesman at the time. And uh, this was his kind of a seed sales truck. So, and this was at a Chrysler dealer. So somebody traded this off on a Dodge, I presume. But hopefully that kept the grill in good shape. It appears so. The hood, I don't know what happened here. It looks like somebody kinked it and then smashed her back down with a hammer. And, uh, I mean, we could even do body work about that good. I don't know what it was that uh, in the, you know, mid to late 80s, early 90s, paint was apparently made out of uh, unicorn farts. So it all just kind of disappeared. 
this pickup was super super sharp in like the early 2000s and then it 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 well that was 20 years ago so it uh it went downhill real fast she's uh pretty cooked off it's not i mean it's got a lot of like that's slightly beyond like that surface rust that's kind of starting to pit out you know f-150 emblem is gone the paint's cooked on the top just gone looks like somebody uh dented that you know what we could probably fix that Body by Mortsky, you coming right up. Where is it at? Where is it up there? Okay. Fixed it. It's the lug nut. Fixed it. A little bit more. Oh yeah. Mint. It's got the uh, OEM, I'd call them kind of a tow mirror. I think there was a smaller mirror they offered too. Add on running boards, you know, old man things. It is a lariat, so you know, cowboy things, you can rope your cows. It's a 4x4, four four. you can tell by the uh, keyhole protector scratcher thinger that somebody put on there, which kind of looks like it's got herpes. We're going to have to give that some penicillin. Being a lariat, it looks like it's got crews. Ugh, let me get my arm around the door here. You can tell because it's got the cruise buttons. So I assume it's got AC. It's got tilt, found that out because when I was trying to steer it on, to the trailer it wasn't going very well and uh, it was kind of tilting on its own so that uh, tilt column probably isn't in real good shape it's got power windows and locks carpet got the faux wood grain around the dash looks like she's got 72,243 so i don't know just gonna take oh looking at that panel i don't know that that's 172 maybe it's only got 72 who knows it's got the Dome light that Ford used for about 65 and three quarter years, the old chroma. Nothing wrong with that. I mean, it was a solid dome light, but that thing ran for quite a while. Somebody's going to comment down below. Looks like the seat, the protector kind of protected it. Might be okay under there. Needs a good cleaning. It's a Lariat and an XLT. Apparently, they didn't want you moving it, the heater, beyond the floor because they uh, rammed a screw in there to prevent it from going over that way. Whatever works, I guess. She's got the four WD stick down on the floor. Didn't even have the steering wheel wrap. That's a nice, okay, Ford wins on that too. Steering wheels, they don't get all, I don't know what it is about GM steering wheels from square bodies, but they get all gooey, Blech. especially in the hot weather. And Ford doors shut so much nicer. 67 to 72 Fords shut better than 67 to 72 Chevy. 73 to 79 shut better than a square body. The bull nose that they call these, they shut better than any square body. Ford had that figured out, didn't they duff? It's got the add-on uh, bed rails here. Good for hooking your ratchet straps up too. Oh, it's even got an additional ratchet strap tie-down up there. Looks like uh, in 1985, we were still putting our spare tires in the pickup box. So it's got kind of this gusset situation going on here. That's uh, typical Ford stains right there. You know, these uh, Ford guys get real excited when they see things Ford related. So then you get white stuff all over. It's got the sliding rear window, you know, for getting rid of your empties. American Legion supporters. I think the cargo light was probably an option. Dual tanks, again, something Ford got done right. You know, where you could pull up the gas pump, you could fill up both tanks from one spot. Chevy thought it would be funny to put it on each side, so you gotta fill up one, spin it around, go to the other side. Yeah, not cool. Like, how brilliant is it now that we have one tank that's the size of two tanks? Plus, we get better fuel economy. I mean, Vehicles might be crappier now than they were back then, according to everybody else, but at least we don't have two stupid tiny fuel tanks to deal with. For that, we, we thank you. This, this bedside, she's uh, gonna need some fender flares. We'll fix that right up. The old Baja All-Terrain 35, 10, 50, 15s there. They got a little tread left, but they are crispy, crispy. All weather checked. Looks like they added on some mud flaps. I call these wheels modulars. I don't know, some people. Probably got different names. Ford had kind of a factory looking one. These are actual American racing, you know, nothing but the finest. Maybe we can get them cleaned up, who knows. Again, this bedside's wasted. Lariat, I'm assuming, comes with this uh, two-tone package or however many tones we got going on now. A lot of earth tones going on there. But you also probably got these sweet pinstripes and divider. And look at that, you even got pinstripes in the tail light. What a deal. They bought this thing in the big metropolis of Aberdeen at a Chrysler dealer. So in probably 96, 97, I'm sure somebody traded this off. Some cowboy, you know, Larry had his giveaway. He probably got himself a brand new Dodge with a 12 valve Cummins in it, right Duff? 
who knows I don't know if that's a factory bumper, tow bumper. Probably like an add-on Laverne or something like that. You can tell it's electronic fuel injection by the way that it is. Because of the way it is. Unless this is the wrong tailgate or somebody put that on there. Who knows? It's missing the, uh, I think there's supposed to be a red band there on the tailgate. Yeah, typical uh, farm truck. The tailgate has seen better days, as has the floor. Another good thing about Fords, they got uh, the galvanized steel, so Paint doesn't stick, but they don't rust out, so there's there's that. Farm pickup again, so you can see all the cross members from throwing rocks in here and flat tires and rims and fence posts and post malls and baling wire and all that good stuff. Baling wire, baling twine, fence and wire. Yeah, those things. Not a cowboy here, so I don't know. It's too bad the tailgate's dinged up. I think there's a whammo in that fender. There's a little dent in the roof that I might have pushed out already. And uh, but yeah, she's straight, but she's she's rusty. The side's better, but still needs a box side. The rubber's coming off. On the other side, they uh, fixed it with some uh, Phillips screws and maybe some flat screws. Looks like they didn't catch that rubber in time. Hate losing your rubber. But yeah, she uh, definitely needs some tires. These two were down, and uh, yeah, they go flat pretty quick, and they're pretty weather checked. This cab corner's got a couple of pinholes in it. The door's pretty good though. If this thing had some decent paint on it, she'd be a pretty sharp rig. This is the dent I was talking about in the fender. Again, missing the F-150 emblem. Looks like it's missing the uh, Lariat emblem back there. Uh, they said they slid into somebody's mailbox one winter. So the old picture that I got of this thing, the only old picture I got of this thing, he could tell when it was because he remembered that winter that he slid into so-and-so's mailbox. Yeah, you can see they put a couple of Phillips screws in that rubber as well. She must have been coming off. It's got the worn, well, I don't know if they're worn. It's got lockouts. They're probably factory Ford lockouts. Yeah, there was some Irish spring inside and uh, a couple other goodies that Duff drug out. It uh, smells pretty rancid in there, hence why Duff is so enthusiastic about getting inside of it. So hopefully our friends didn't chew up any wiring or anything. That's one thing. We really haven't had much issue about the mice chewing up wiring, so... That's good. You know how to open the hood on a Ford Duff? He says, oh yeah, I got this. Well, between that grill guard, getting in the way of his safety catch and being an inside pop, Duff struggled with her a little bit, but he got her open. Let's see what this thing is. It's a five liter. It is not a 351 Windsor, according to this Ford thing, 5.0L-5HM. No big deal. It's kind of open for a 5.1 because, you know, oh, look at this. They unhook. Oh, she seized up. The old, uh, is it still a turbo if it's belt driven? No, 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 it's a supercharger. The old smog supercharger is unhooked. How dare you? It's got the Ford Steel Me Easy solenoid. Somebody put a new battery cable on it. Looks like that one's a little bit uh, chewy. It's got the ignition box over here. Or is that the voltage regulator? I think that's the voltage regulator. You know, Still in 85, you know, when did GM go to internally regulated in the 70s? In 85, Ford's still using voltage regulators? What the hey? Looks like they put a new Napa hose on. Didn't go with the flex hose, so props to them and their uh, hose salesman. They did use the old wire style clamp though, unfortunately. But it seems like it's holding up. Plastic radiator in 85. I always thought these intakes were the biggest, ugliest things ever. I don't know why Ford thought these two tubes and coming over cross ram style. I don't know. Whatever. Oh, she's got the uh, serviceability light up here with the uh, reel and cord and whatnot. I wonder if that works. AC, power steering, which I'm guessing by uh, the uh, schmoo all over the outside and that the uh, jug was inside of the cab of power steering fluid that that's probably leaking or the sector. Power brakes. What is this? Just a. Ugh. Is that the. That is paint. That's paint off the brake booster. So I'm guessing the uh, master cylinder's leaking. Yep. She's bone dry back there. So master cylinder's leaking, running down the uh, brake booster and uh, causing that to leak and take our paint off because brake fluid's real good on paint. So is Mother Nature on this vintage of paint. It's got the jack handle up here yet. What else we got? Oh, cruise control? Heck of a deal. All right, I guess uh, let's check the dipstick, Jimmy. We know that it takes six quarts with a filter. How black is it gonna be? 
please be on the stick. Oh, she's in this. She's right to the top. This stuff looks pretty clean, actually. Not bad, not bad at all. That'll do, pig. That'll do. That'll do, pig. That'll do. Well, before we forget, let's dump some brake fluid in here. Otherwise, we might hit the pedal and push a bunch of air in the system. We don't want that. There we go. Brake fluid replenished. How about coolant? I can't imagine that went anywhere other than maybe turning into dust. Looks like a standard hose on the bottom, formed hose. Oh, that's been replaced too, what a deal. No flexi hoses. Oh boy. We should probably put some coolant in there while we're at it. Let's wait till we get it running. And then forget and cook it and have to put head gaskets in it. Wouldn't it be sweet if we got the AC to work? Would that be the first thing we had that AC worked, Duff? Where are you at? Are you underneath that thing? You are a silly dog. Well, I suppose let's lift her up, take a look at the bottom side since Duff's under there getting the uh, lift ready. All right, we got all blue up in the air here. I topped off the coolant. Of course, I spilled because that's what I do. Uh-oh, uh-oh, Ford boys. She's got an AC Delco fan belt on it. Power steering, actually. No, what is that? How many belts are on this dang thing? It's even missing one. One for the alternator, one for the power steering and fan, and one for the AC. Goodness gracious. New world record, three V-belts. It's got the TTB, twin traction beam. Ford came out with the twin I-beam in, I don't know, 64, five? I think it's 65. But then uh, they decided to run some axle shafts through them and make them 4WD. I think that was in 73 and a half tons. I don't know, just winging it. Uh, they were straight axles on the uh, three quarter tons and one tons for a while longer. But yeah, kind of a neat setup. They, they work good when they work, but there's a lot of suspension components to wear out. And that's why when you go down the road and you see one of these Fords sitting like this, it's because they're, uh, I think it's these bushings right here, is shot. Uh, and then I think this, the diff is just a 8.8 .8 center section. And uh, she's been leaked down a bit. Bottom of the engine, she's pretty greasy. I didn't even check to see if it was a three speed or four speed. I'm guessing it's a whatever, overdrive A4OD or AOD or I don't know, whatever. But maybe she's just a regular three speed. But she's uh, weeping a bit as well. I don't know if it's coming out the shift shaft or from main seal or the pan gasket, who knows what. Still got the cataract converter on it. Nobody's robbed that yet, luckily. How tight is our steering shaft? Pretty tight. Is that the fuel pump? Or is that some type of inline emissions, something or other? S circuited, what did the, the, oh, no, there we go. Pressurized fuel system, C service manual. There we go, I had to read it in English. My French is not so bueno. So, that might be our fuel pump, or maybe it's the fuel filter. Probably the filter. I'm guessing the pumps are in the tank, but it'd be cool if they were in line. Looks like the uh, transfer case is leaking as well. It's a new process, and it is a model 208F. So I'm guessing GM had a 208, and Ford had a 208, and so they called it the 208F for the Ferd. Another catalytic converter. Ford was pretty notorious for the uh, multiple catalytic converter situations. Drive shafts are nice and tight. Okay, never mind. She got a little play there. It seems like it's in the uh, transfer case. It looks like it needs that seal as well. Pinion seal ain't leaking up here. Drive shaft seems tight there, tight in the splines. Fuel tank. Oh, these uh, plastic guards were the death of a lot of uh, square body fuel tanks. The dirt sits in there and between the rocks rubbing a hole and the dirt getting wet and rotting the tank out, that's a good way to uh, get rid of a fuel tank. Oh, 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 look at that. I would say we're gonna need a muffler too at some point. Rear drive shafts. Good and tight. Man, it looks like somebody's even greased them a few times. What a deal. 
Again, another 8.8 .8 in the rear. I believe 1979 was the last year of the uh, Ford 9-inch in pickups. 80 when they went to the Bullnose, which is 80 to 86. Then they went to the old 8.8s. Pretty sure, but what do I know? I'm not a Ford guy. So we should see, oh man, which tank we're hooked up to and if that tank is any good. Almost looks like this tank's been replaced. That is way shiny. And uh, yeah, it doesn't match the straps here. So I'm guessing that tank rotted out or maybe that's the tank they're using. So we're gonna try to use the rear tank, I think. I don't see an inline fuel pump, so they must be in the tanks. Might have to do some investigating here. No busted leaf springs. <laughs> Park brake cable, we know what to do with those. They already pre-cut them for us, what a deal. Looks like the breather tube on the old 8.8 .8 is already uh, broke off, full of crud, so we might want to drill that out. And put a new breather hose, where was that supposed to go? Funny whoever put this fuel tank in it didn't notice that. Rehook her back up. No tag on the diff, so we can't see what gear ratio it is. I'm guessing like a 373, probably. Pretty common in four-wheel drives. When we get a new muffler, we should uh, just get a whole tailpipe, too. Wee-oo, wee-oo. Bluetooth tailpipe. Looks like they put the towing package on there with the wire in and got the nice splitter there. Teeter off. All right, now we gotta do, figure out what we're gonna do for a fuel situation. Now, typically when we start a carbureted engine, we uh, just cut the fuel line up front so that the fuel pump isn't picking up any fuel from the pump and then just see if she'll start. But since this is fuel injected, we need pressurized fuel. I suppose we could, you know, try running her off of some hot sauce or some Cosby sauce down the uh, throat hole. But since this thing's only been off the road for four and a half years, that, that fuel can't be that bad, right? What's the worst thing we do, plug up? The injectors, I don't even know what, I, I'm guessing this has got just one or two injectors in the throttle body or something, or I don't, know, I don't know, maybe it's got eight injectors on a rail, common rails, I don't know what we're doing here. Anyway, we're just gonna figure out which tank we're hooked up to. We're gonna try to get it to this back tank. We're gonna dump a few gallons of fresh stuff in there and uh, we're gonna throw a battery in it and it's just gonna go boom. That's what we do around here, it goes forward, just boom. Fuel injection, just turn the key on, hook the battery up, you just wanna go. Right, Duff? Yeah, fuel injection, not entertaining. He's just taking a nap over there by the flammable cabinet. And then I guess we'll have to work on some Chryslers if we gots to. All right, I'm gonna set her down and flip her to the rear tank if it ain't already and dump some gas in. Throw a battery and see what happens. Did a little research on the old Rock Auto. This looks like a 1985 Ford F-150. You could either get fuel injected or carbureted. Clearly we have fuel injected. And you could have a couple of different tank options. The saddle tank, you could either get a 16 and a half gallon tank or a 19 gallon tank, and then the rear tank was an option. So I'm guessing this thing's got a pair of 19 gallon tanks, but it might be a 19 and a 16 and a half. I checked the switch, it's right next to the heater controls. It is on the rear tank, and there is in fact two fuel pumps, all three fuel pumps. One in each of the tanks, which is a low pressure fuel pump, and then one in line uh, that is a high pressure fuel pump. So Indeed, that area that said high pressure that I thought was probably a filter, that is the high pressure fuel pump. So at least it's easy to get at and replace should there be an issue, but there's not gonna be an issue, right Duff? He's still over there taking a nap. Ford's bore him. So we're gonna throw a battery in this pig. I already threw six gallons of gas in the tank. It was like spewing back on us. So I'm pretty sure that thing is plumb full. So six gallons, if you take 18, about a third of it is fresh gas. So let's see what happens. See what our battery sponsor this week is and uh, see what happens when we try cranking this thing over. Looks like Sandman is our battery sponsor this week. This is a fresh one, just picked her up. Also, we just created a Facebook page, official Facebook page for Mort Ski Repair. Go check it out. You can see some memes and we post our current what's going on around here. Also, we got all our vehicles listed on there. Merchandise, you can check that out. We got all our vehicles listed on there. What's available, if they got titles, how much they are. Instead of looking in the video description for the specific vehicle you want, you can go on there and you can check, see what we got. 70 Pontiac, gone. 70 Ford F-250, still here. 51 Ford F-4, still here. So on and so forth. It's all on there. 
easy to check out. Like, share, subscribe, whatever you got to do. Join, follow. I think you got to follow is what you got to do on there. But uh, long term, we're going to try to get some uh, shorter videos on there, like maybe cut down videos like this and maybe just make a video of explosions of me blowing my face off, me getting electrocuted, me doing donuts, burnouts. You name it, uh, we're going to give her a whirl the old book face thing or so. Go check it out. Morski Repair on Facebook. There is another. Uh, Mortsky Repair fan group that is run by Mr. Sandman right here. I think there's like 5,500 subscribers on it. Go follow that. Uh, everybody is sharing some pretty funny memes and whatnot on there. And I post on there and I reply to comments. And if you need to get a hold of me, you can get a hold of me through there. Or go check us out on Instagram or you can always just send us an email. Repair at gmail.com. All right. Thanks to Sandman for our battery sponsor. Let's throw this in there. Of course, it's backwards because forward things. So we spin it this way. Ugh. Hook this up. Where's our ground? That's pretty rough looking. There she is, right there. It's a little chewy. No sparkage. We're gonna get a, a wrench and tighten that up, maybe. Just kidding. We're just gonna push her in place, call it good enough. All right, I guess we just go hit a key now and it pops right off. I don't know what the heck else to do. The moment of anticipation, Duff. Let's uh, hit the key and see what happens. I don't know, fuel injection is just going to come to life, right? Or we're going to pull our freaking hair out trying to figure out what's wrong with it. And it'll turn into a watch quest work video. Minus the uh, minute details and the uh, tear part of 1980s electrical components and super cool fancy tools and sine waves and photographs and whatever it is that he uses. All right, here is our... Uh fuel switch front and rear we're on the rear that's where it was when i got in here i mean it makes sense because it was the new tank this headliner is in my face and it's disgusting and it needs to go away oh hantavirus there fixed it it's a new shower for your old lady if she needs it no oh, one last piece of lingerie here Looks like it was serviced by McLean Service, which is no longer in business. No date down here? Needs an oil change at 72,800. She's 72,002. Oh, we got another 557 miles before she needs service again. We're good to go. All right. Oh, dang it. The emissions light came on, Greta. Look at that. Clock even works. Well, we can't turn it off. We have to have the fan on low. We're not going to get brave and flip her to high. She is an overdrive, you can tell by the over on the drive. Here we go. Slingshot engage. Slingshot engaged. Oh boy. Let's uh, give a shout out to that starter because it sounds terrible. And the key sticks. Well, cycle the key a few times, see if it goes. I don't know what else to do. I can hear a pump running back there. Trying anyway. Oh, she wants to go. Cycle her a couple more times. Come on, baby. Give her some gas. Maybe not. Yes. Duff took off running. He is not impressed. Did a critter come out of the tailpipe? Man. Oh yeah, power steering is definitely low. Fuel gauge, apparently, well, maybe it didn't have as much fuel as I thought, but uh, we're building oil pressure, that's good. Sounds nice and smooth. She's idling down now, hopefully not dying. And it's dying. Hmm. Well, why did it die? I guess we're going to leave her run for a little bit. Let's see what happens. Oh, do the windows work? Well, that's for the other side and it's trying. Oh, come on, baby. What well, stalled the engine when I rolled her down? It's kind of a two hand job. These are way faster than GM ones. Man. These Fords are just way all around better, more gooder. 
I think there's supposed to be a carpeted panel down there at the uh, bottom. She's missing, hence why the clips are just hanging out there. She's fancy though, she's got the chrome door handles. I think some of them are just plastic. But what do I know about them? Or about anything. Oh no, is it gonna die again, Duff? There. Just keep running. Did you see a critter run out of the tailpipe, or what did you take off like a shot for? Oh, Duff, there he is right there on the wheel. Duff, come here. Get him, get him, get him, right here. Oh, he went on the wheel, right there, get him. Where's Fivel? Where's he at? That is the brownest mouse I've, come here, what's back here? Right here, get him, right here, hey. Hey, see where my hand is at, goofball? Right here. Hey, what's this? What's in there? No, you are a goon. We need a cat. You're no good. Guess I should have got the BB gun. Hopefully uh, that camera caught him coming out of the tailpipe. I tell you what, let's uh, take her outside. I gotta put some power steering fluid in it first. Maybe check the tranny. Well, I tell you what, let's take her outside. Let's uh, top off the power steering because I know that's no good. Let's maybe check the brakes. Let's take this thing outside and hopefully said mouse falls off on the road and instead of uh, inhabiting my shop for the rest of the winter because we've already had a mouse problem. Then I'll give us a chance to get some of these leaves out of the bed and whatnot and maybe even a chance to walk home. Can't wait. It's a beautiful day for that. Every day is a great day when you get to walk home from your Ford. All right. Let's do it. Seems like it's idling fine. I don't know. Let's go up here and check her out under the hood. It's really not that obnoxious for how terrible shape that muffler's in. Just quiet under here though. Awesome. A little smoke coming off over there. I'm sure that's from just grease and dust and everything from being on the engine, but yeah. Sounds really good under the hood here. Okay. Power steering fluid and then going for a ride. Ford has to have the silliest power steering fluid caps. Oh yeah. Oh, you gotta take the engine dipstick out to get at it? Oh, perfect. And that still doesn't guarantee it's gonna, oh yeah. A little cavitation going on in there. It's a little uh, Wednesday morning after Taco Tuesday. I don't know that I've ever bought a jug of power steering fluid. I've had a few come in vehicles like this, but. I just run ATF. What's the difference? Oh boy, way too much. I don't know what holds it on. Hopes and dreams, apparently. It's quieter anyway. Well, since it's running and warming up, I'm gonna shift the uh, transmission into drive and reverse a couple times and cycle it, and then uh, hopefully we get a good reading on our stick, because clearly the uh, transmission is leaking. So we'll see how much we gotta put in there. I bet it doesn't take a gallon, like we've had to put in everything as of recent, but who knows, could be wrong. Went to climb in, look at this Duff. Look at him, sticking his head out the uh, modular hole of that wheel over there. You are a terrible mousing dog. Where's the transfusion dipstick at, Jimmy? Hidden somewhere? Oh, there it is, way back there. Pint. Give 
good now. Well, since it started so well and uh, the brake pedal goes to the floor, let's address the brakes. I got my syringe all full of brake fluid. We're going to try pushing it in the bleeders in the front because the front reservoir, well, the back reservoir connected to the front calipers is what was empty. So we're going to try pushing that air out the top. Hopefully we get some brakes back. But look at what I found when I just uh, lifted her up on the hoist. So this here cross member cradle kind of, I think it's got the engine mounts on it and it holds the... Uh, twin traction beams, but I don't know if you can see this very well. See all that? That's all giant booger weld that somebody uh, welded up this cross member. There's even a bunch on the bottom there. Somebody must have cracked that out and welded her up. Look at that cute little peekaboo hole for the oil filter to come out with. Yeah, that's real handy. Oh, hey, there's a tag up front, so See, it says a ratio on it. Of course, we can't read it. There, clean her up with a steel toothbrush. Can you read that? On the top left, 354s. It's a pretty solid ratio, especially with an overdrive. If this 302 doesn't have any power, she's uh, really gonna be a turd with 354s as opposed to like a 373. How are those uh, steering joints? Whatever, axle joints, half shaft, knuckles. Seem like they're tight. Good deal. All right. Back to the brakes. Believe it or not, the brake bleeders were completely plugged up. So while I was taking them out, put them in the vise, and uh, using a drill to clean them out, I had clean brake fluid running out. So I quick threaded them back in, and uh, we got brakes. That is like, seriously, probably the second or third time in my entire life where cracking a bleeder or taking it out actually worked for bleeding brakes. It just, I don't know. Never works for me, but we got a good pedal now. This thing runs so good, and we know it's due for an oil change. I happen to have a uh, Baldwin B2 filter on hand, so we're gonna drop the oil, put that on there, and treat this thing right. So, yeah, Duff still hasn't managed to catch that mouse yet. Hopefully, it's still on the pickup and hasn't rehomed itself somewhere in the shop here. So like I said, the shop that uh, did the last oil change is no longer in business. They've been out of business for, I don't know, five, six, eight years. But anyway, the plug seemed really loose. And I'm not saying this is said shop's fault, but uh, instead of putting the right plug in there, I don't, I don't know what happened there, but there's a bunch of Teflon tape on it. I'm gonna go dig through my stash of core engines. See if we can't find a better drain plug than that, because that one's, she's pretty chewed up, unfortunately. And I know in the help section of your local automotive parts store, there's usually a bunch of these self-tapping, oversized, so on and so forth. And uh, if we had a parts store that was open after, uh, what is it now? Almost five o'clock on a Friday? I would, I would go get one, but... Um, yeah, nothing's open till eight o'clock Monday and it's a 25 mile drive. So we're just gonna make do with what we got. It was fine before, we could probably tape it up and be good, but I think it's the same threads as a uh, small block Chevy is. I think I got one of those laying upside down out in the uh, scrap pile, so we shall see. Oh, it says half inch on it, so I guess it's half inch fine thread. Who knows? So I suppose I could take a half inch bolt fine thread and uh, put a washer on it and a bunch of goop. I'm gonna see what I got. Tech tip of the day, I always have a fleet of crappy old uh, engines laying out back. Mostly Y blocks, but what's that small block? Hopefully that plug is the same. We're gonna try it. Oh, otherwise we got a TBI small block there. That should be the same. Let's find out. Always uh, store your engines upside down so, you know, everything runs out of them. So they aren't locked up so you can do a revival later. Oof -ta. That one looks a little bit bigger than half inch. That might be 9 sixteenths. We'll save it though. Of course, can't get a terrain plug on this uh, TBI engine, so... Uh, and it's already drank a couple of gallons of water, so let's just tip her over. Come on now. Here we go. Not light. <sighs> Oh. oh my kid, let's just let it go. That 
That looks like the one we need. All right. Back to the light and the warmth of the shop. Here's our original drain plug. You can see I started peeling some of that Teflon tape off. There is a ball of that on there. Here's the uh, TBI small block Chevy. Looks to be the same. And this is off of like earlier. I think this is like a 68, 350 or 327. Something like that. Anywho, that looks like she's a little bit bigger diameter. And then see what's kind of cut in the end and pinched in like tapered. I wonder if that ain't an aftermarket drain plug meant for cutting its own threads or something. Pretty common because uh, fortunately this happens more often than you'd think. I've only ran into it a few times, so I guess we've been lucky. I'm going to thread this drain plug in without any thread tape on it. We'll see how it seats and then we'll go from there. All right, seems like she's starting all right. Oh yeah. Good to go. That ain't going nowhere. Looks like Dale over at uh, McLean's used the old Napa Golds 1515, which is basically just a Wix filter. But I did notice when we were under here, the power steering fluid that I spilt couple hours earlier is just dripping out. It looks like it's just this return hose. I think I got some bulk return hose. Look at that, they got that line rubbing on the little radiator hose. Let's tweak that a bit so that don't rub through. I don't know why Ford's got this, I don't know, what they, was it a cooling loop for the power steering? The return comes off of the uh, reservoir down here and over to here and down over to here and up and around and back up. And then into the uh, steering sector. So hopefully we just take a couple of screws off there and swap that thing out. These guys said that they just kind of quit driving it because they use a fuel tank in the back. That's what they were using it for at the end. And uh, they got a bigger fuel tank that wasn't, they put it on a flatbed, one ton, dually. And so this thing was just kind of obsolete. So it just kind of sat there because it wasn't big enough to haul the fuel tank they needed because this new equipment, their farmers doesn't, they, they, they need more fuel, so whatever they had in the back of this 200 gallons wasn't enough for 500 or I'm guessing it wasn't 500, probably like 150. But anyway, that's why they parked it, but I'm guessing this little power steering debacle, judging by the uh, gallon of power steering fluid we found and uh, how it's running out here, was probably part of the reason they parked it too, so let's see if we can't get that addressed. <laughs> All right, I got a new chunk of bulk hose here. This is, I don't know, what's it tell you? SAE J2076, three ace. You can't use fuel line. You gotta use this uh, hose that's rated for oil. So you can use this on transmission cooler lines and power steering return hose, uh, only on the return side because it's low pressure. But if you use a regular gasoline hose, it's gonna, Swell up real big and then uh, leak like a sieve, as they say, and that ain't no bueno. So, you can buy this in bulk rolls or you can buy it in a couple foot chunks, but hopefully this fixes our issue. Whereas on the power pressure side, it's usually a formed hose with crimped ends and stuff and you gotta buy the whole thing, but on the return side, it's just some bulk hose like fuel hose. The more you know. This would be a quick, easy fix for somebody if they had been in this situation. But I'm guessing these guys just wasn't in the books to keep the old blue Ford running any longer, so they put her to pasture because of it, maybe. Well, doctor her up. All right, now he's gotta tighten up a couple of clamps. And she'll be good to go. That top one's kind of a bugger to get at. Man, look at how swelled up and chewy that old hose is. All right, we got her topped off. Hopefully that resolves our leak. We got six quarts of 10W30 mobile in the uh, engine cavity. So I think we're pretty much uh, good on fluids up here for a while. I don't know, I'm gonna go uh, have a sandwich, take a step back, look at old uh, 
Buford here and figure out what we're gonna do next. I wonder if we could get them wheels to shine up. Man, those things were nice back in the day. But they're uh, looking pretty crody. I'll have to do some Googling on the internet and see what we can clean them up with. Just doing a little routine maintenance, checking our air filter. You can see the uh, critter's been nibbling on them a little bit. They also decided to make a hole out of the uh, air intake, so we're gonna go ahead and clean that out of there as well. Ew. You're gonna want some gloves for this. Oh, that's sticky. I'm guessing that's uh, urine. With those 354 gears, we're gonna need all the 302 horsepower, so we're gonna wanna get all the restriction out of here. Let's see this little PCV vent or something right there. It's got a filter on it, I guess. We're gonna stick our good use filter back in there, button her back up. So much emissions. I think while we're at it, doing a little maintenance, let's jack her up. Check the uh, front and rear diffs and the transfer case, and maybe even get the old uh, grease circo. What do you say, Duff? Do a little preventative maintenance, huh? Not such a bad idea, is it? No. He likes preventative maintenance. He also likes mice. I don't like batteries that go bad when you uh, trying to record. That one's done that twice today on me, so it found a new home. Hopefully I caught it in time, but just pulling this plug out, listen. Oh, it must have let all the air out. Anyway, there was pressure on that plug because that vent back here, wherever it's at, is plugged up. So as things expand and contract, you gotta have ventilation to the atmosphere. So if you don't have that, it takes your pinion seals out, it takes your axle seals out. So you always gotta check that vent. So glad we checked that. I'm glad I pointed the vent thinger out. So we're gonna have to uh, pull this bolt out here. We'll clean that out with a uh, drill bit. Also, I noticed, you know, this other park brake supposed to go over to here. It's not here. They got her duct taped back up to itself. So we're gonna go ahead and, you know, weight reduce those and just eliminate them. But front diff was good. This back one we haven't checked so far, but yeah, there was, there was pressure on there. I suppose it was outside and everything was cold and then we brought it in here and it warmed up and everything expanded so it wanted to push that plug out. It should have pushed out here. So we're gonna pull that out and clean her up quick. All right, got some new 5 16 vacuum tubing and we got the uh, proper vent doohickey for the end. You know how much I love these things. Every time I junk something out, I, I save them because it seems like they're always missing on the uh, good stuff. So we're just gonna fish this through the uh, frame rail here. And we're gonna tie her up to one of those lines up there. We'll Tech tip of the day, if any of you new viewers, I've probably showed this in the past, but if you can't see, the fluid level or it ain't running out you want to see just where it's at get yourself a zip tie your zip tie moment slide her in there and you can see she's down quite a ways so let's get some dextron recon and top her off If you've ever filled one of these transfer cases or a diff and you know just how much of a pain it is to get one of them bottles up there, you know, those 80, 90 or 1540 or whatever you're doing or ATF in this case, check into these Mighty Vacs. That's the MVA 6851 fluid extractor. Uh, you can take this thing apart and clean it and drain it. It's got a cap on the end so it don't leak out. So you can use different fluids. Like I said, you can clean her out. Uh, Wes hooked me up with one of these. Well, told me about it. And uh, no regrets buying this thing. This thing took almost a full quart. So I think it probably took like uh, 26, 28 ounces. So that would have been, I mean, we'd have probably wasted a full quart doing that. Because uh, it's 
kind of tight in there. Well, not so bad on this one, some of them are, but yeah, look into one of these Mighty Vacs. They're well worth the asking price. I don't remember what I paid for it, but what is, how's that saying go? Uh, long after you forget the price, you remember the quality. I don't know, something like that, but these things are pretty good. Shameless plug, not a sponsor. Now back to your regularly scheduled crappy programming. Silly Ford even has to use uh, special battery cables. So instead of coming out straight off the end, it comes off at a 90, not a big deal. Then it comes down here and then boop, it's all stripped off and it's, I just thought this was a holder. Nope, that's how it grounds the chassis, which is kind of neat. And then it continues the end here. Well, I don't have a cable like that, but I do have a cable that's the same length from here to here. And then I got another guy with two eyelets on it that'll go from here to here. So we'll take this guy and go from the negative down to the frame. And that same bolt will go through that guy, which will go up to the engine block. So problem solved, but more quirky stuff on these uh, Fords. I don't know why they couldn't just go to the block and then have another cable that comes down. But such is life. All right, we're going to get that put on there and move on to the next debacle. All right, we've got our new ground cable on. This cable, I don't know if it goes to the ECU or what, but it goes into the harness there. And uh, that didn't have an eyelet on it before. It was, you know, built onto the Ford cable because that's pretty common to have a, a second cable coming off your ground and or your power. So I just put an eyelet on there, heat shrink solder eyelet. And then they got one that was going from the, I believe that's the voltage regulator, up here to the battery. And it was pretty crude, you know, using the uh, great big yellow connectors on a, chunk of 14 gauge wire nothing but the uh, finest cowboy stuff so uh yeah we did that cable upright and uh, yeah i just like having fresh battery cables on there because if you don't have a good battery connection you're not going to get anywhere you know you might be able to limp it home with a bad plug wire you got a bad power or ground or bad battery for that matter you're gonna be walking and we don't want to do that so i always like doctoring them up if i can because this thing's definitely going to be back on the road and roadworthy, ain't it, Duff? He's checking out the bottom side and make sure we got everything greased. All right. I think we should clean this thing up. What do you say? Do that in the morning? All right. Sounds good. So we took the old furred around the block and uh, we got stuck on the ice on flat ground because the tires are bald, it's icy, and the right front tire is dragging. See if I can turn this? It turns hard. This side we can't turn by hand so we're just gonna go ahead and put new calipers on it and hoses and of course i forgot to get brake pads so they look shot fantastic so we're probably gonna have to wait for some of them story of my life just kidding we're putting the used ones in for now all right let's do this ford's got these sliders i don't know what you call them you take this bolt out and then you got to knock this silly shim out and then it comes off of there so let's do that. I'm sure these are the original hoses, probably the original calipers. I'm guessing it's had pads at one point, but let's do it. Rotors look pretty good, actually. I mean, I've seen worse. Let's be honest. Guys, uh, enjoy me being grumpy. So, so let's let's talk about some things that make me grumpy. First thing is the clip that holds the uh, brake hose on this thing. Ford really nailed it on this guy. See how it's got that, you know, that 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 closed-in hole right there. I thought you just slide this thing off. No, you got to take the brake line off first, and then pull the line out of the way, and then pry this tab up and over the end of the brake hose, and then slide it off. And of course, it's way back in here tucked in behind the uh, shock tower. So you can't really see what's going on in there. So that's pretty sweet. And then how Ford's got this brake caliper sling. I don't know, it's got two slides here. So we're gonna have to file those down and clean them up, get the rust off it and then grease them up. So you stick the caliper in there and then you, you take this spring and put it in between this retainer and you slam it in place with a hammer. And then you take a bolt 
collar bolt and you tighten it up so it can't slide out of it. But anyway, it's just a terrible, terrible design. There's no good way to keep it lubricated. And when it's not lubricated, it doesn't slide very well. So one pad wears out faster. Like this one's pretty well cooked, but at least it wore relatively evenly. It's a little bit thinner on the left side than the right. But look at this one. This one is less than half the thickness on the left side than it is the right side. So clearly that thing was cockeyed in there. Good news is Chin is in the big city tonight. So I called up o o o O'Reilly's and they had one on hand. Kid by the name of Kane. People, I don't know, where are you, where are you coming up with these names? I'll tell you what. Anyway, no offense to anybody watching named Kane. But, uh, oh, it came from the Bible. Never mind. Just kidding. Sorry, Kane. Uh, anyway, we're, we can't put it together without any pads, but yeah, this uh, slider design leaves a little bit to be desired. I called the master mechanic himself, Seth himself, Wes of Watch Wes Work. And I said, what do you do to put these back together? And he says, I just run a file over them and smear some grease on them. That's about all you can do. He says, it's, it's not an ideal design, but it's what you got. So I was like, all right, I guess. You don't have to put any magic lube on there. He said, just put some grease. Pick some, fan, pick some purple grease. Everybody's like, what kind of grease did you put on there? I don't know what color grease we got, but that's what we're going to do. Just clean it up, slide it back together once we get some uh, pads. I was just going to throw it back together, but... These pads are, they're cooked. And like I said, Chin was in the big city, so Chin to save the day. What else are we going to do, Duff? Oh, you're a lot of help. Just holding that bed down there. I guess I got a new tailpipe and a muffler, so we'll, since we got her on the hoist, we'll stick that on there tonight while we wait for the Chin to bring our brake pads tomorrow. Okay. What an idiot. Who orders calipers and forgets to order brake pads? At least I got new brake hoses. Oh, we can put the rear brake hose on. We can check the condition of the rear brakes. There we go. We got all kinds of stuff to do tonight. Good news is our back brake shoes look real good. A lot of material left there. I lubed up our adjusters here. And they move nice and free, both sides. No big grooves in the drums. So rear brakes are good to go. We're going to throw a new hose on because that thing's... Looking a little brittle, and uh, we'll be good back here. And then it's on to the rotten, crappy tailpipe that was housing three inhabitants that we did not want around. Since this is stock exhaust, you can go on Rock Auto and get these tailpipes. The shipping is more than the tailpipe. I, I want to say I got like 40 bucks into this thing. And uh, most exhaust shops are probably 80 to 100 bucks an hour. So. Plus you can have materials, you can't go wrong. And they usually fit really well. Hopefully I did not just jinx myself. So I got a new muffler and a tailpipe. Uh, worst case scenario, we gotta get a hold of boom tube and have them bend up a chunk of pipe or expand a piece of pipe or whatever, but let's see how this goes. Hopefully it just fits right on. I love dealing with rusty, thin exhaust pipe. So yeah, should go great. For this tailpipe, all we got is this little hanger here. So we just gotta slide it through that little rubber dealio. You know, if I was thinking, I would've got some new rubbers, you know? You always want a new rubber. And then the same deal up here. Looks like it's just a clamp attaching to that weird, funky hanger thing. So I guess if we break this clamp, it's just a standard clamp. We should be able to grab one of them off the shelf. And then up front here, I don't, this is where hopefully that muffler is the same. I was thinking our muffler's got that doodad on it but worst case scenario we'll just have to have boom tube makeup whatever this to this is because that does not look oem to me looks like it's kind of hanging by hopes and dreams as well two catalytic converters stacked up what the french okay let's uh get this conglomeration of trash out of here Of course, nothing can ever be easy. I don't know what was in here, some type of intermediate pipe. And this is not original. And it's, I think it's too short right there. Cause once we got our muffler connected to that, we're uh, about six inches too short there or more. So I think what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take this piece out 
then we're gonna take her to boom tube and we're gonna get the same thing, but we're gonna get it, you know, six, eight inches longer so that we got plenty of length. And then we should be good to go, in theory. But diameter's right here. I checked, this pipe fits into that one, so we should be good to go there. The bends look like they fit over the rear end. The hanger fits in the hanger. Tailpipe exits where it needs to be, so everything's good on our aftermarket parts. It's just that somebody's been in here before and did some things. And that's pretty much how our uh, night's going here for getting parts. Somebody screwed up the exhausts. You know, just, just overall great things. Exactly what you expect when you're working on hot garbage like we always do. What do you think, Duff? You ready to uh, call her a night? Yeah, okay. Well, since boom tube's not open this late, we uh, got the rear brake hose replaced. That went pretty well, actually. And then we got our Timken, what's the part number on this thing? 3946, like you care. The front output for the transfer case. Pressure washed it the other day and we let her sit. She's definitely leaking. So we're gonna take our drive shaft off, then we're gonna take the yoke off, then we're gonna pop the seal out, pop a new one in. But the uh, fuel filters right here, I got a new one of those from Rock Auto. Looks like it come from straight from 1939. Well, that's what it says since 1939. But anyway, this thing's been around a couple of days. Anywho, so I spun that canister off. And look at that seal. Hopefully our uh, filter kit comes with a new one because I don't know if it's the ethanol or what, but that seal is no bueno. Looks like there's some crud in there. So since we got some old gas in there anyway, I figured now would be a good time to stick a filter in it. So I'm gonna stick that in there. Hopefully it comes with a seal, and then we're gonna do this yoke here. The seal for the yoke, you know what I mean. Yeah. Let's seal that up. Look at the instructions that came with this thing. Replace new filter cartridge and o-ring, making sure that the o-ring is seated in the o-ring groove of the canister. This stuff looks like it was printed in the 70s. But yeah, none of these are gonna work to seal up that uh, housing right there, so. Uh, I got some O-rings, but I don't have anything that big out. Or do I? Who knows? Here's what's gonna make her run real good. Stop real good. Delco parts on a Ford. Love it. No, we're not gonna bench clean it, because why would we? We'd rather struggle with our life. That's what we're good at. That's all. Carry on. Got her exhaust all in place. Ran a boom tubes quick. And it may make up this little extension, just two and a quarter pipe expanded so it fits over two and a quarter. And then this fits over two and a quarter. And the muffler, the tailpipe, everything fits up pretty dang good for what it is. Uh, could use a little bit more length in there, but story of my life. All right, now we're gonna go do some brakes. So I'm gonna take a file, run over this mating surface on each side, and then we're gonna throw some fancy green grease. Or is that blue? I don't know. It identifies as blue around here. And then we're gonna put that all back together with some new brake vest pads that Chinny brought for us from the big city. And then we're gonna bleed some brakes. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Just can't get excited about the looks of these running boards, plus they're kind of uh, 
in sad shape. I need a little work. So, we're gonna make a little clearance, clearance. Two four. We have clearance, Clarence. Roger, Roger. What's our vector, Victor? Get rid of them things. Yeah, looks like they've been uh, torn off and reattached a few times too. Imagine that. All right, let's do this. All right, here's our secret weapon. We got some 31 by 10, 50, 15 Iron Mans. Yeah, that's right. We'd cue the music if we wouldn't uh, get nailed for copyright infringement. These are uh, all country MTs. What's that, mud, mud train, mud traction? It's, you know what I mean. They're pretty aggressive. These are 15 by eight pro comps. They, they don't come with lug nuts or center caps, so I had to buy the center caps from somebody else and the lug nuts anyway. Got most of it through the Amazonia. I think the, the caps came through the eBay. But I think these things are going to really spice this thing up a bit. I think they look they look all right, especially once we get rid of the running boards. I wonder if I could clear 35s. 35s would have been pretty sweet. We'll have to get her on the ground. I should have done some searching on the internet. But I just like the look of a black wheel. And, of course, these are white letters. So I put them in because otherwise it's a sin. That's right, I'm a poet and I didn't even know it. All right, let's get this thing on the ground and see how she looks with the new shoes. I don't know if we'd have got away with 35s on the front. We'd have probably had to put some springs in there. Who knows? It also sits a little bit lower in the front than it does in the back. Kind of like the way it looks up there, so we either need to bring her down back here or up, up there and some bigger wheels and tires. I think that's what we need, some, some new springs up there and to, uh, Put some 35s on it. What do you think? I think it looks a lot better though. Get rid of those running boards. Kind of torn on if we take these bed rails off or if they'll clean up. I don't know. What do you think, Duff? He says, I just want to go for an RID. Also, while I was under here bleeding the brakes after I did some pressure washing, let me, uh, <laughs> we got to put her back up in the air and get the old Miller buzz gun out. Hey, this should show you what's going on. There's that weld, and uh, yeah, they either missed the crack or uh, it moved to another spot. I'm guessing it just moved over with all that heat, so we might have to jack her up and move this power steering line and clean her up a little bit better and burn her in real good. She's cracked all the way through. The old Ferd has seen some things. Probably best just to plate it. There's an idea, Duff. Throw a plate on that son of a biscuit. Also, it looks like our steering sector might be leaking just a hair. But I think we uh, patched up the power steering leak from the hoses, so that's good. Well, Duff, you ready for the first ride in old blue here? Well, I'd roll your window down, but it's just uh, making noises over there, not doing anything. Went down just far enough to let a bunch of critters in, though. Snow and such. Brakes seem pretty. Brakes seem really good. They should. I mean, I guess the rears. We just checked them out. But the fronts are all new. Nice and quiet with that fresh exhaust on there. Speedo works. Fuel gauge says we're at a quarter tank. I think that's the first thing we're gonna do. We're gonna try to make her to the gas pumps and top her off with some fresh petrol, cause. I'm guessing this thing's probably got, you know, it's been off the road for three years or whatever, and it's probably hadn't had gas in it for that long. Who knows? But we're in four wheel drive. Yeah, let's take it out of that. Man, that's what that whining noise is up front. So like I said, when I did move it around the shop, uh, from the back to the front, uh, I did notice that the four wheel drive, or that the four wheel drive works, because like I said, that right front wheel was skidding, so I had to put it in four-wheel drive just to make it around the yard after the old ice storm. Starter sounds a little growly, but we got a new one of those. It's a Delco, because Fords love Delco parts. And I got a new switch for the column, but I, I think it's like the linkage in between the key and the switch at the bottom of the column that's sticking, that's causing it to uh, stay engaged for too long, and I think that's why the starter sounds awful growly. So... We should probably 
fix that situation before we install the new starter. Bam, shifts right in a second. Yeah, this thing drives pretty good. Come on, window, go back up. There you go. Whoops. Sorry about your window not going back up. Sliding through a window? This thing's plush. I suppose the cruise works? Why do you even turn it on? Oh, it's, it's all the buttons on the steering wheel. On, set, not a chance. Not a chance. Yep, definitely no cruise control. What is vibrating in the dash? Is it the blower motor? Yep, it's the blower motor. I turned it on high, but there isn't stuff flying everywhere, so that's a plus. I need to fix that window motor over there. Sorry, pal. No, oh, you need some attention? Here you go, boy. We'll fix your window for you. The beauty of electric windows. All right, hold on, come on, let me drive. It's a Ford, I gotta control this horsepower. Maybe it's those big knobby tires that are causing that vibration. I feel like it's definitely the blower motor. Maybe not. No strange clunks or noises. I don't think I, like the shocks look like they're original. The rears maybe have been replaced, but we could probably use some shocks. Like I said, I think I'd buy some new springs for the front and maybe just like, can you get like a one inch lift spring for the front? Or maybe just a spacer to level her out. A little leveling kit on the bull nose would be good. feel good. When you let off the gas, there's kind of a clunk. I don't know if it's the rear end has got a little play in the pinion or what. I'm guessing that's what it is. So maybe she's got 172,000 on her, not 72,000. That's probably more likely. It's pretty good for a bullnose. 172,000 miles. I was a little worried about the tires, the old Iron Man's making a bunch of howling coming into town, but they don't howl at all. They're not uh, nearly as noisy as I thought they'd be. So that's a plus. Thought they'd just be screaming for me to turn the white letters out. Ooh, squirrel. Alright, rear tank. We're leaving the front alone for now. Wait for a warmer day to mess with that. Yeah, that's the second person I've seen wearing a mask today. Is that is that a thing again? Are we wearing masks again? Ugh, I hope not. All right, let's put some petrol in this hog. What do we got? 309.9 .9 per gallon today. You can smell all the uh, dust and everything burning off the engine. Gross. Well, between the two tanks, we got four gallons in. So this thing is chock full of three-year-old fuel. Which, I guess if it runs on it, is good. The only bad thing is, the fuel gauge says a quarter tank. So, might need a sending unit. I don't, that's a look like a new tank back there. Maybe they put the old sending unit in, who knows. Well. Let's do this. Clean up the transmission. It was a little soggy. It looks like it's coming out of the shift shaft seal, so it's pretty awesome. Just looking at it, I feel like you got to pull the pan and the valve body. I don't know. If you know how to uh, change the shift shaft seal in a AOD, comment down below if it's a real pain in the rear or if it's doable for a couple of morons like us. Because I hate leaks, especially transmission leaks. I don't know why, but they really annoy me. Probably because it all leaks out and you never check it and then you wreck your transmission. It does shift nice and firm though. Just kidding, now it's shifting, chugging in between, must be second, third. 
at 25 mile an hour? Is that when they shift into third? Who knows? So if you could like put your thumbs on the window over there and like slide it up so that that cold air isn't coming in, yeah, that'd be great. You know, maybe even run the window switch while you're doing it. A lot of help, pal. Hey, the radio works though. Kind of. Little Fleetwood Mac. What's this surginess? It's like fuel filter, but we just put one of them in. Is there multiple fuel filters, Duff? What are you doing down there? Okay, nose in the vents. Come on now, you're gonna put us in the rhubarb. I'm trying to drive here. All right, Let's see if she'll do 65. Yeah, we need to figure out what that vibration is because that is driving me insane. What is it? Is it in the heater box? Is it something rubbing the firewall? pickup though when you can actually hear like a vibration in the dash you know most of the hot garbage we have it's we're just trying to keep from falling through the floorboards yeah with these big tires and those uh 354 gears i don't think it likes overdrive very much i feel like it just kicks in and out and i don't think there's a way to just oh there is a drive it says one drive overdrive so you can't lock her in second you just get first drive and overdrive it's a three-speed overdrive. Well, I suppose it is. Yeah, 354 gears. Thing needs 373s. That would wake her up. We should have checked the lights. It's pretty freaking froggy out today. What do they say about frog? Uh, 90, 90 days after a foggy day, it rains or something like that. Farmer's almanac things on white tails. I wish it had a tag so you can see what gear it's in and RPM it's running because I, I feel like she's not hitting overdrive. If it does, it kicks back out right away. Duff says this thing's way too nice for us. I would concur. I just think I'd like to cruise in the AC work at both windows. I mean, radio, power steering, four wheel drive, automatic overdrive, new brakes, new tires. System, new exhaust, new battery, new battery cable. This thing's way too good for us. It's so good that Duff's just napping away on the bench seat here. Not bad for a pickup that was just put to pasture. Glad we caught it when we did for the uh, three amigos that were in the tailpipe did any more damage than they did. Yeah, she just cruises down the road at 65. It's a shame this thing is as rusty as it is. I'd be tempted to do, uh, clean her up a bit more. I don't think the paint's gonna buff out. Some of it would, but a lot of it's just cooked right off. It ain't really that bent up, at least. I mean, it's got that going for it. The vibration in the dash, that is, that is the kicker for me. That's we gotta do something about that. Is it putting out heat? Let's flip her to warm and find out. Flexi hoses, that's a plus. 
in between the knee frog, frogging up the windows, and how froggy it is outside. It's a whole lot of frogginess in this snow ride today. Maybe it's because you're breathing so hard. Should have seen him earlier. He had his nose in the vent. I think he was trying to suck start the HVAC system like he was trying to suck start that mercury the other day. Are you going to suck the mice out of that tailpipe? Just breathe it all in. I have no idea. What a dog. All right, let's see how the brakes work from 70 mile an hour. All pretty good. Blinkers working? What a deal. This thing is good. These things look way better than those Fords. What are they, like the 97 to 03 Fords? I mean, it's the same thing as the Expedition, but I'm gonna pay 300 bucks for it. So come on, pull those OBS Fords. Look way more gooder. I like all the Fords. Bump sides, dead sides, slick sides. 53 to 56s, fridges, first gen F series. They're all good, except for those things. Don't do it for me. Anything 97 and newer. Some of the super duties are pretty tolerable, I guess. Oh, do you approve of this thing or what? Old blue bulldoze? Yeah, I feel like somebody else should own it. If you want to own this thing, check out the video description down below. Price and availability. And also, while you're down there, Check out the prices on Super Scrapers. We just got a fresh shipment of those suckers. Great stocking stuffer. You know what else is a great stocking stuffer? I think you got time yet. Morsky merchandise. There's a link in the description for that as well. And if uh, you don't want to buy some for somebody else, send the link to somebody else. But you want it to buy it for you. You know, get all the merch so that Duff and I can have a sandwich and treat filled holiday season. Just kidding. We're just. We're we're gonna take whatever we get out of it. We're gonna go buy more hot garbage like this. Cause that's what we do. Just a constant revolving door of hot garbage around here. Maybe we'll go find a bullnose crew. You know what we need? A crew cab. Just in case we ever had some friend stuff. What do you think about that? You know? Then maybe we could, you know, invite some people out next fall, some subscribers. And they they could come hunting with us. We could haul them around, chase some birds. Oh yeah, you like that? Birds? Where's birds? Crew cab. I guess we had a couple crew cabs. We just never got one running. I'm trying to think if we got any crew cabs. Yeah, they are all railroad tracks. I don't know that we got any crew cabs in here. So, if you know what a crew cab is, 67 to 72 Ford crew cab, or a 57 to 60 fridge or slick side, minus a Ford crew cab. I guess we'll take a square body Chevy. Right? Just, we'll take an internet. We'll take literally anything. We're not picky around here. Well, we put about six, eight, 10, 12, well, about 15 miles on by the time we get home. So, I mean, this is one of our more successful drives. I shouldn't say anything. We won't make it home. We got this, right, Duff? It's a tropical 27 degrees Fahrenheit here in Podunk today. So, I mean, it's not the worst day to walk home. But we're not going to. Oh, Ferd's gonna make it back for us. I hope. Why wouldn't it? Pretty foggy out. And then that guy with his, what generation would that be? Fourth gen Firebird? Drive with no headlights on. Kids these days, I tell you what. It's probably got a V6 in it, that's why.
it's a good day to not be on the road. So let's just pull her back into the ranch and call her a day. Didn't even get to go check out the mud mud terrain tires, manual tra manual transmission tires. We better see if she'll do a donut with the big tires on enough her. Oh yeah. Ready? Do a donut? It's, the yard is all ice now, so it's like not even a challenge anymore. Okay. Hang out! Oh, oh them tires, they just grip. Oh, there she goes. That was a lot of rocks getting thrown at the van. Whoops. Somebody needs to buy the van, so we stopped throwing rocks at it. Not very often we do donuts to the right. All right. She'll do donuts. Did it spin both tires? No, just one tire. All right, folks. There you have it. The Dusky and I got a fuel injected five liter overdrive 1985 Ford XLT Lariat edition pick them up truck running. I forget what the tag said. This is, we, I forget, we drug this thing home when there was no snow on the ground and I put new plates on it the other day. I, forget, I think it was at 19 anyway, so that's three years. Not that long ago by our standards when we get stuff running that's been sitting for 30 or 40 years on a typical basis. but. Yeah, this thing runs pretty good. Uh, quick tune-up, you know, maybe fix the fuel gauge, fix the window, fix a lot of little things, fix the heater core, figure out the vibration. But yeah, did some brakes, did some tires, did some exhaust work, did a little electrical work. We gotta, we gotta fix that uh, front crossover. We should pull it back in the shop and do that, but we'll get that done. You need to own this thing. Price and availability down below. Check out our other videos. Get yourself some merch. Duff says, let's go on to the next one. Thank you very much for watching. Remember, doesn't matter how you get it done, as long as you're having fun. Was this one fun? Yeah. Yeah. Pulling those Fords are fun. Does the horn work? <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> All right. What are we going to work on next? Oh, yeah, we got to finish this thing. Why is the seat making? Why is the seat? Did those guys wear out the seat in here? Alright. Son of a biscuit. All the lights even work. What a deal. Oh, just kidding that. No. Pulled the seat cover off. Blew her out. She's pretty good in here. The seat ain't even all blown out. What a deal. Just need to put a headliner in there, eh, Duff? Yeah, this thing's gonna be good. Should probably wipe down the dash too. Little detail job. Should be good to go. Oh yeah, go get the seat all dirty now. You silly dog. They are plush seats, what can I say?